of Tech Tips with Metro Home Theater Group. I'm Brent McCall, and this is... Adam Rogers. Hey, guys. How's it going? So uh, we got a new show for us today. Uh, our new episode is we've got... Uh, uh, we're going to be talking about rack accessories. Um, so this is like a, uh, a little bit of a personal favorite of mine. Uh, I, I like dressing the rack up nice and making it look really well and getting the, the wires all done up in the right way and coming up with new ways of doing things. And so today we're going to be talking about some different things that we have that will make life easier for you to, uh, to dress your rack. So uh, from there. But before we get into that, a couple of things have come up over the past week on tech calls that I've had that I want to go over with Adam and some of the guys. It is not uncommon for us to get a tech call. And one of the first things we ask is, go out to your truck, get your volt -ohm meter. Guys, carry a volt -ohm meter in your truck, please. We really need you to have this because it definitely makes a difference in our ability to get the information to help you. The next thing you guys need is some kind of source. You would be amazed at how many times we get a call and we say, do you have a source in the house other than the one you're using? Direct TV or cable box or something like that. It's like, well, no, this is all I have. Buy yourself an NVIDIA Shield. I'm not shilling for them, but this is what you need. With an NVIDIA Shield, you can download contact, content from 4kmedia.org, put it on a flash drive, plug it in, and you have a source you can carry anywhere that's hard drive. Have that with you in the truck so that when you want to test 1080p or 4K HDR UHD content, you have it available. So, moving on, Adam. So, yeah, guys. So, the, just like Brent was saying, I mean, having an extra accessory on you and, uh, or an extra, pardon me, an extra input on you um, really makes a, a world of difference when you give us a call. That's one of the first things we're going to ask you for. Do you have an extra input? So, yeah, definitely that. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna dive right into unboxing. It's gonna be a little bit different today because I don't have one item. I have four items we're gonna be unboxing today. So guys, uh, take it away. Unboxing with the boy. boy, 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 boy. All right guys, so what we've got going on today, um, these are some little known items that a lot of people don't know that we actually have. And it's one of my favorite things. Uh, before I started working here, um, I was setting up different racks and for different, uh, you know, home theaters or home automation systems and whatnot. And so one of the things that I learned about that, I didn't realize that we even had at the time, uh, is this guy here actually. So this is our CSR Deco 8. Uh, the really nice thing about this is that it, all it is, is a 4U uh, rack accessory that all you're going to do is put any kind of decor plate in the front of it. And so this allows you to have different combinations. You can have all your speaker points going to this. You can have, you know, some network cables going to it. You can get some keystones that'll go into it as well for some decor keystone setups. Uh, volume and controls. Volume controls. Yep. Uh, and, and actually, go ahead. That's where this came from. I was doing a restaurant for the owner of Metra, and I needed the ability to put eight volume controls in a rack. Fortunately, we have a tool and die shop, so I had to machine me out a piece to do exactly what I needed because I could not find one online that was instantly accessible. Realize this is a very needed item in the field. We do all of our speaker terminals in it, and in conjunction with this piece, which goes in the rack, we're gonna kind of skip the unboxing because we don't have it in the box, is the PC Deco 8. So this piece here is really great. All it is is really just a, a mate for this or a match for this. What's gonna happen is you've actually got uh, exactly the same number. It's, it's, you've got eight decor plates on this one. You've got eight decor plates on this one here. And so all you're gonna do is you're gonna, you know, at least in, in what I do anyways, is I create a matching pair between this one and the one that's in the rack. So this actually has dog ears on it. So you're gonna cut out the opening for it. And Brent, if you'll grab that one over there, that one's still uh, available to take apart, but it's got the dog ears on the back of it. And so all you gotta do is just cut out the opening for it. And then from there, it gives you a nice space to bring your wires through. And then on the front of it, of course, you've got this metal plate that will then, uh, you'll have your decor uh, pieces attached to it. And so from there, all I do is I just create an umbilical cord that goes from the wall plate over to the rack plate. And so it creates a really nice, clean uh, connection between everything. Uh, I know a lot of guys, they build their racks uh, at, the, uh, at the office or, or at the shop, and then they'll take them and they'll deliver them. 
to the to the site which is what we did yeah exactly and so uh when you do that the nice thing is is that if you already create the umbilical because you're planning this out already ahead of time anyways or should be yeah exactly you're going to be building that umbilical anyway so that when you roll up to the to the house you roll the rack in into place you take your umbilical cord everything's labeled at that point you're going to plug everything in and then from there you've got you know, all your connections are made now with the pc deco 8 when you take the metal plate off with the four screws you have a very large opening in the wall which is wonderful because you're not sticking your hand into a single or two gang box that's the only opening in the wall that's why this was created to give me an old man more room to work in a wall mm -hmm. this follows right along with this as adam said so everything matches up i do encourage labeling and note that on this all the screws come with this that you need and they're all white headed so you get a nice clean trim yep that's right and actually some really cool guys um uh are a really cool guy actually but uh, i think you i think you're watching right now actually uh took this idea and, and ran with it a little bit further they actually took the metal plate off and uh, they had a cnc machine uh at their shop and so they recreated this plate on a CNC machine and with, they, speak -ons. with speak ons and with some different connections on it. So they were able to make a, a completely custom setup to it. And all they did was just use the plastic ring on the outside. So uh, I believe you're watching the show right now. I think I saw your comment earlier. So, um, but yeah, so that was a really cool idea. And guys that have the actual CNC machines, it's a great use of this. Definitely look at, at, at this as an option for you. So this is, we have the CSPC Deco 8 or DECO 8. We have the CSR DECO8, and so uh, the PC Deco8 would be, would be at the wall, and the R Deco8 would be in the rack. PC standing for post construction, construction, and R standing for rack. We're very simple people here. Yeah. So, uh, and actually, one more thing I wanted to talk about before we move on to the next two pieces uh, is something that would be a little bit uh, sketchy, maybe is the best way to put it, but it works really well. Uh, so you can put the box behind it. Can, can I can I say that yeah. at that yeah, point? Because you can put a name of box behind these. Yeah. So what I've done in the past is I've actually taken this piece here, which is just a an IEC WP. Uh, WP thank you. Uh, and what this does is this actually has the three prong uh, connection to it. And I've actually used this with the 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 rack system on the inside. And I've gone from this to the PDU that's actually powering the entire rack. Um, Kind of cut up the wires a little bit and did it that way, but that's another matter. Let's let, let, make sure you, you're staying up to code on everything. So, but you can also use it inside the wall, giving you that that plate as connection there. As long as there. you put a NEMA box on the back, exactly. And you can. Now, this is another one of those things that came from me being slightly lazy. When I hang, hung my projector in my theater, I ran the extension cord up through the attic, down through a hole, and plugged it in my power distribution unit for battery backup. And my wife was not happy with the green cord hanging down from the ceiling. That's where this came from. I found an old computer chassis in the garage, pulled the plug out, hauled it to our CNC department. They put it in a decor plate for me. And I realized, thank golly, we need to be selling these things. Guys, this is an inexpensive tool for you. It's a great way to power your remote devices, your projectors, your panels, your subwoofers, and get them all back to the same grounding point, the same power distribution unit, our battery backup that the rest of your rack is in. Very much use this. Standard outlet at your display or subwoofer, this back where your PDU or surge protector is. So it's a great use for that, guys. One other thing before we move on, ask questions, guys. We're waiting for them. So just re remember to do that. Or send money. <laughs> well, that's another matter entirely. Um, okay, guys, so moving on, um, the next piece that we have, this is the CSRV1U. Now, Brent, this is a little bit of a special project of your own. Yeah, I'm lazy. I like to put all my components back on the side, back side of the rack. And for example, this is the 2U version of it. Adam has, is working on a rack with me where we have a HDMI matrix. We want to protect the entire system so we have ins and outs with our HDMI surge protector. So on this is Velcro, meaning you just put a little piece of Velcro on the back of each product, stick it on there. I do encourage you to label it. And you now have full serviceability with all of the products on the back side of the rack. So this just screws on the back. You can put your IR components, your surge protectors, your power supplies, anything that needs to go back there that you don't want to tie wrap into place or is hanging off the side. This is a phenomenal tool. It is very, very price competitive with standard non velcro racks and the Velcro comes already on it. Exactly, so we've got everything there. One of the things that I like using it for is you can put your, uh, your HDMI extenders on it. Um, you can put your, uh, like Brent was saying, your IR crits and everything on it. What it does is it puts it in a really nice place on the rack. 
It's on the outside. It's easily accessible. It get a lot of heat reduction on it because the heat's going to stay. You, you got a lot of airflow on the back of the rack, uh, in most cases, anyways, unless you have a door on the back of it. But that's another matter entirely. But with this here, everything's already on uh, the Velcro itself. So the Velcro comes already pre-attached. You've got the, uh, the glue on the back of it. So it's just a matter of just taking this off at this point. You can actually cut this down. We included everything you're going to need for it. Except the scissors. Except the scissors. But of course, if you, if you want to, you can, of course, use your own roll of, uh, of loop uh, as well. This is, is this, yeah, this is the loop side, now, isn't it? The I other side that's that. very nice for this is for wire management. And I do a lot of this because it allows you to do a very clean and serviceable wire management. Now they're just hanging here loose, but this is a great way to control the wires on the back of your racks. Coming out of your matrix, out of your AVR, or your surge protectors, this is a great way to control them. So one other thing I'd like for you guys to do for me um, while we're doing all of this, if you would go ahead and uh, send us some ideas. Um, so you guys have been out in the field. We've all been out in the field. What we're looking for is, you know, what's an interesting thing that you've used, whether it be our product or even somebody else's, I don't mind. Uh, let us know what you use. We're always looking for ideas and different ways to do it. Uh, and in fact, um, should we go ahead and open up the, the emails to, uh, to uh, people sending in pictures of the, of the well-done racks that they have? Do we have them? We don't have any yet. Oh, we, I, I can just use my own email for that if okay. we want to. Absolutely. So, all right, guys. So here's what it is. Go ahead and uh, I don't know if we've got a, a picture for it or not, but my email address is adamr at metrohometheater.com. And so what I would like you to do, any kind of pictures you have of the racks that you've done that are done up really nice, take some pictures and send it in to us. I, I haven't worked it out with management yet, but if we get some really good pictures and some We're really good ones, something away we'll coolness. give something away. So just, uh, you know, go ahead and do that for us and send in some pictures of, of the racks that you've done. Give us some ideas of things that you've done with some interesting product uh, and some Show us odd ways of doing it. You know, let's be honest. Rack dressing is one of the coolest things in the world. Uh, a bunch of years ago, and this is one of the funny things that happens in this business. Mm -hmm. We were having a meeting on upcoming projects with our marketing people, the ad people, and all of our employees that were involved in product development. And the young lady at the time in charge of marketing mentioned rack porn which is what we call a well-dressed rack. And I remember that the marketing lady was just absolutely aghast <laughs> at that word. It's like, we can't, we can't say that. But she also didn't like the word terminal on an RJ45 or a coax Term either. Termination, yeah, yeah. She yeah, thought yeah. that was just too deadly. So she's so, no longer with us. But So you yeah. know what, guys? Uh, yeah, send in your rack porn. So the, 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 best, uh, the best pictures you've got of, of the work that, that you're doing, send it in to us. Uh, and like I said, we'll, uh, we'll remember, pick out some good ones. Rack point does need to be safe for work. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. So just send in a really nice, well-dressed rack. That's that's you know all the wires are done exactly where they're supposed to be at, and everything else. Service loops are good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So guys, uh, some other stuff that I wanted to talk about, and again, uh, bring the questions in. Uh, ask any kind of questions you have. If you have questions about the different uh, accessories that we're showing off at this point, I know we're doing just a little bit of, you know. Um, Random fire, or not random fire, pardon me. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Scattershot. Scattershot, maybe, yeah. We're just sending everything out here all at once for you. So send us some, some questions if you have any, and we'll go ahead and talk about those as well. Power cords, guys, everybody needs them. We do have them. They come in the nice little poly bag. And if you guys haven't noticed yet, our poly bag's open at the bottom for a reason. Because if you open it up, put it in there, and you wind up not using it, you can put it back in, reseal, and hang it back up, and it's okay. Also, in the back of all of our bags, is an SKU. I encourage you to pick up tracking software for your smartphone and start tracking the products that are used on your job site. It's amazing how much stuff does not get put on the list that goes in a job, you don't bill for it, and you wind up losing money. Take the little bags, put them in a bigger bag, and put that in a big bag at the end of the job. Check all your parts. Make sure that you itemize them to your customer, or at least bill them for them. That's right. We actually just talked to uh, one, of our, one of our really good dealers that we're good friends with. Um, and what he does is he'll, he'll take a, a box just full of HDMI cables and power cables and then take that entire thing to the, to the job site with them because at that point, they don't know exactly how long right. the HDMI cable they're going to need because it's, it, it's, a, it's more of an art form than a, than a science when you're building a rack, and that's, that's kind of why we're, we're looking for those really now, nice He says this because he spent two days wiring a rack, and I came in and was upset with this wiring, and it's not that he was wrong. It just wasn't my way. Yeah. So, in, in, well, you had some good points. I had the I had the amplifiers a little high. We didn't have any good uh, uh, low low level of or uh, gravity point on it. So, um, but anyways, guys, uh, some of the other stuff. It, the nice thing about that is is if you keep track of where 
and how many cables you're putting into it, you've got that. Now, uh, on a note for the power, the really nice thing about these is that these come in different lengths. We do have, uh, we've got a one meter, a two meter, a four meter uh, for this, uh, pardon me, we have a one meter on, in this one. We do have the right angle style as well uh, on that. So you do have the one meter, the two meter, and the four meter in that style. Um, and then we also have the two prong style. We've got the, uh, the, the figure eight uh, right angle, we've got the straight angle, and then we've got the one that's got the little square on the end of it. Do we have an actual name for that? The polarized figure eight is what they call that. Um, so the nice thing about that guys is that if you have the equipment that's going in the rack and you realize that the cable that they included with it is too short, too long, you can actually go ahead and just replace the cable. Um, some guys have, I've heard stories of guys cutting the, the cables that come with it and resoldering on and, and you know, closing it back up again. And while, yeah, you can do that. It is uh, time consuming. It's time consuming and it can you be a little bit of a, up of a risk. The opportunity of a problem. Exactly. So uh, that's kind of why we brought these out was to give you the ability to go ahead and, and put that in there for it. So, and we have a question. We do. Let me pull it up here real quick. And let's see. Alex. All right, Alex, you said, do you have any means to attach an HT receiver to the rack so it won't be moved instead of putting it on a shelf? So you're talking about a, 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 some kind of home theater receiver, an, uh, AVR. an AVR of some sort? I'm going to go with no on that one. No, but there are manufacturers out there that have the different racks uh, systems and the different shelving systems. You've probably seen it. They've got the little stoppers. It's stopping it from moving back and forth on the rack. There's not so much something that's lifting. Uh, right now, the there are a shelf. couple. There are some that offer the, the downward clamps as well. They do, yeah. Middle Atlantic has one where you put on the back side, you've got the little mm -hmm. silver backing feet that screw in the bottom. Yep. But they also have a vertical clamp. They, they use that for the cable boxes a lot. You, yep. What you'll see is, is it's usually not tall enough to put like a, a receiver under, but a cable box or a Blu-ray player, they do have something that'll go down on top of it. Um, really great idea. If that's something that everyone's looking for, um, you know, send us and let us know that, that, you know, hey, maybe we should look into something. And we'll, yeah. that's kind of one, one of the, the nice reasons for this. A lot of what you guys see in our catalog, a lot of what, we hear from you goes into what we build. We are small enough that we can adapt to changes that you desire. I, again, the surge protector, and we've talked about this in the past. This came from a dealer calling with the problem. The AIO came from problems that we were seeing with the new 4K devices. You guys called us with issues. We marked this stuff. We talked to each other about it. And we have the ability frequently to make a small production run of something that makes your life easier. But please tell us about it. If we don't know, honestly, we can't fix it. We're not in the field every day anymore. You guys see a much wider variety of products and installation needs than we do, and we'd love to hear from you. So, guys, um, I'm just going back through the comments real quick to see what we have going on. Corbin, uh, I'm, I'm seeing what you're talking about here. Are, are you talking about the Velcro piece? Uh, send us another comment and so we can clear that yeah, up a little okay. bit. Yeah, okay. Here's um, the issue. It is black on black. I get it. Um, I'm going to try the overhead to see if that helps. Mm -hmm. uh, hang on. Oops, slow down. So guys, what you'll see here, you've got the white backing to it. And if you strip that white off, that's going to be your, your double-sided glue. Uh, you've got the hook that's actually attached to the, the plate itself. And then the loop is what's actually coming loose. That way you've got the nice soft side going on the equipment rather than the hard tack going on the, uh, on the equipment. And this comes with everything you need, including the rack screws. Exactly. Yeah. So all you have to do is take it out of the box, take the package and screw it in place. Gotcha. It's all there. Now, Corbin, what, um, I, I'm, I'm talking directly to people now. What, what, what do you know about that, huh? Uh, so, Corbin, I, I, it's great. So, you're saying you did not realize it was a Velcro piece. What, uh, just, just, what, what piece were, were you looking for on, on that? that I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'm pretty sure it's that. Looked like it was something more. Okay. Yep. Give us a call later. Uh, our phone number here is 866-839-9187. No, it's not. It changed. Oh, well, that's right. We updated our, now, hold on. That number still works. Okay. It still works, but we are updating our number, and I'm not sure exactly what the number is, but we'll update that with you guys here yeah, next we'll, show. We'll, next show, we'll have a yeah. new uh, contact card. Um, and don't forget, everybody, CD is coming up very soon. And, ah. oh. If you guys look down here, we've got the number. Wow. <laughs> These guys are on top of it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, again, um, well, I wanted to thank the crew that we're working with here. They, they cover our butts on a lot of things. So thanks CD a lot is, for that. CD is coming up. And this year, Jeff Boccaccio and I will be discussing the differences between copper and fiber and extenders and installations, which one to use, how to use it, and why to use it. This will not be our traditional lunch and learn. It will be a standing room only arrangement this year. We've run out of space for the chairs and the booth. But please come on in, join us. There's a lot to learn, a lot to discuss. And we really want your input and feedback to where we should be going with the show. 
For example, do I really keep Adam? Is he that important? Is he that cute? Or do I replace <laughs> him with somebody younger, maybe of a different gender? Well, I mean, you are kind of getting Old. up there in age anyway, yeah, so we may have to replace you here. We have another question. Anyways. Another question. Let's see what we got. Uh, any plans for a 9-volt, 12-volt, 24 rack mount PDU? Um, we that's, had. Uh, so that's, that's actually a really good question. We actually um, created how many, far, how many years ago did we bring that to CDA? Five or six. Five or six years ago. So, uh, again, if this is something you guys are looking for, more, uh, the, the more you ask for it, the more we know that you guys are wanting it. And so that's kind of one of the reasons that we started this show was we wanted that feedback from you guys out in the field. So if that's something that you're looking for, let us know more of it. Things like that, and we're always having. how much you want to pay for it. That was what happened yeah. last time around, is we got it developed and we looked at it and the cost, and at least at the time, yeah. was more than dealers thought would work for them. But let us know what features you want and where the pricing needs to be. Because we really do want to make life easier for you. Let's face it, the happier you are, the less phone calls I get, and I'm all for that. Yeah, exactly. So um, with that, guys, the, uh, let's see. Oh, thanks, Austin. Um, but yeah, so as far as the nine volt, 12 volt, 24 rack mount PDU, yeah, I'm assuming you're looking for like the multiple, uh, voltages that are in there, power taps on it. If that's something you guys are looking for, again, let us know about it. Um, it, we're always looking to, uh, uh, yeah, they are, they are pretty pricey. Um, we're always looking for new ideas and whatnot. And again, that's kind of why we started this was to have that direct contact with you guys out in the field. If there's something you guys are, are thinking to yourselves that, you know, it'd be really nice to have something that did this we need to know what it is. That way we can supply it to you. That's kind of what our specialty is, is supplying the things that are kind of, kind of out there a little bit, but realize that they actually work really well for now, it. Now, I'm gonna to touch again on the topic we started with. Um, guys, when you go out to the field, in your truck, there's some things you need to have to make your life, and honestly, our lives a little easier. Back to this, have a source. Always carry a source with you. Do not rely on your customer to have a disc. Do not rely on your customer to have a player. Do not rely on your customer to have a source that's functioning. You can go out there, spend two hours hunting down a problem that's not yours because the cable box is not working. It happens. Have something you know works. Out there, carry with you a 150-foot pre-terminated spool of Cat5. Notice I said Cat5. Mm -hmm. I want, wor or Cat5e. Yeah. I want worst case scenario to test your extender so you can run it across the floor to make sure there's not a problem in the wall or there's not a hardware problem. Have a, fair, a spare set of extenders with you. Have, I'm going to bend down a second, have a 150 foot fiber cable in your truck. And why would you have a 150 foot fiber cable in your truck? Because your extender may not be working, your Cat5 may have a problem, yep. the fiber in the wall may be suspect, you don't know. Have something long enough with you to work in any job to test. If you can't test it, how do you know what you're fixing? Exactly. So guys, if it, it, um, like Brent's saying, this is going back to more of the troubleshooting side of things. And this is what we, these tech are the tips. phone calls that, yeah, tech tips. These are the phone calls that we get from you guys. You know, when we're doing the troubleshooting and whatnot, hey, my extender's not working. Hey, the this not work. This isn't working. This isn't working. Um, and and so having these things with you makes everyone's lives easier, not just ours, but it makes your life easier because that means that you already have the things that that we're looking for to do some testing on. And we can validate what's not functioning correctly. If you don't have anything else, any more Cat Five, any more extenders, any more cables, all we can do, kind of guys, is guess. We don't want to guess. We want to solve your problem. We want you done, out the door, and paid. That's the goal. It's simple. That's right. So, guys, what? Um, just to jump back even further, back to what what the, the show's about today, we're talking about rack accessories, of course. <laughs> um, the last little bit, we're, we're actually getting pretty up there in time at the moment. Um, but I do want to say the last thing is, is that um, the Velcro straps, zip ties, or tie wraps, whatever you call them, we've got them. So these are things that are definitely necessary to, to doing a good, clean setup. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I don't know if we've got the ability to do it right now. I don't think I even told the, the guys about it. Um, but I want to start a little bit of a war, oh, uh, yeah. a little bit about this. So, and this is, this is a legitimate war, guys. <laughs> all right, guys. So listen, uh, here's, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a poll? What you, a poll to see zip ties or Velcro straps. Now, and here's why. Because he did the rack for a job I'm doing for the owner of the company. I use zip ties only for preliminary running of my wires to hold them in position and get stuff done. After that, I switch to Velcro. 
he likes zip, zip ties. ties. Yep. And it has been an ongoing battle between us. And it's what makes working here so much fun because it is, we're all not, well, I only do it this way. We all are open to ideas and your suggestions. Now, on that note, because Adam brought this out, if you guys have not seen our install bay catalog, you need to get a copy of this. Look at it, install. It's off the uh, Metro the, the, Online the, website. Yep, Metro Online website. This thing has got all sorts of great stuff in it. Grill cloth, grill speaker mesh, yep. speaker terminals, screws, Velcro, tie wraps. It's all in here. Get one of these. It's great. So, yeah, uh, yeah get in touch with your, your rep uh, for the area here. Um, ask them to send out an install bay uh, 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 book to you. Um, that way you've got full access to it. Because like, like Brent said, this really does have a lot of information. And it's got a lot of things. Stuff you can get at Home Depot and Lowe's. Exactly. So um, definitely, definitely look for this. Um, that's where, uh, if you guys, uh, a, a lot of guys who are doing the, the home theater stuff, you come from a 12-volt background. Um, so you're probably pretty familiar with this already. Uh, and you're probably already coming up with some good ideas anyways. And which, share them with us. Yeah, please send them over to us. Let us know what, what you're using. Um, but definitely look at Install Bay as a, a good resource for some different, uh, you know, different cable ties and connections and everything else that, that you would need. And it is now time for us to wrap it up because today is All You Could Eat Indian. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for stopping by for another episode of Tech Tips with Metro Home Theater. I'm Brett McCall. I'm Adam Rogers, guys. And thank have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.